Hello everyone, welcome back to Keeping Critters. This next video is all about Nugget. He is our tortoise. He is a tiny little guy right now. Um, I'm sure everybody's wondering how big is he gonna get? Well, see for yourself. The first picture is of Nugget in his food dish. The second picture I found on the internet for you is a full grown tortoise. Um, and then it has a small one on top, which is about the size of Nugget right now. So as you can tell, Nugget's going to grow really big. Um, welcome to my page today. And I hope you enjoy the video regarding Nugget. Good morning and welcome back to Keeping Critters. Um, so this morning we're going to do some things with our tortoise. Um, so I'm with my little man Nugget this morning. Um, he is a Silcata tortoise. Um, right now he's teeny tiny um, and I got my mouse out and I'll put him beside it so you can um, get an idea of how small he is. Um, they are the third largest tortoises in the world. So while he's teeny tiny right now, he's got a lot of growing to do. So um, as he grows, we'll change his habitat. At some point, we'll probably move him to be outdoors um, mostly. So I kind of have some ideas already of the area um, at the house that we're in. Um, but that's going to probably be five or ten years from now. Um, I laugh because they say they go really quickly for the first 10 or 15 years. Yeah, because that's really quickly, right? Um, but then they do slow down. Um, they continue to grow for quite some time, but um, the growth rate um, is a lot slower um, after they get about 10, 15. Um, so anyway, um, I'm going to turn you around, uh, show you his habitat. We'll take him out and talk about um, what it is I have in store this morning. So I want to change his habitat a little bit. So give me one sec. Okay, so I got you turned around. I guess I'll turn my camera this way. This is his habitat that we have right now. Um, so it's a glass aquarium. On the top of it, of course, we have the metal cage um, so that it's breathable in there. Um, his lights are on top. Again, he needs a light for heat sources and then one for sunlight, so UVB. So we have a combination um, light right here. I'm turning it off for just a second while I get him out of here and then we'll take the lids, um, move them around a little bit and I'll turn the light back on so everybody can see. So down here in the corner, here's my little man, Nugget. Um, still asleep this morning, he hasn't been out and about. I reach down in there, let's grab him out. There he is. Oh, did you hear his little squeak? It's so cute. So let me put him down here next to my mouse. Um, so that kind of gives you a reference of how little he is at the moment. Um, we got him locally um, at a shop um, that um, got them from a person that's local. Um, so it's really nice we know where he came from, that he's really healthy. Um, they have really big appetites for such little dudes. <laughs> so um, I'll show you when we get going what he eats. Um, so one of the things that we need to do is we need to monitor um, the warmth in his cage and the humidity. So as you can see in the back of his cage, I have a thermometer and it also has a humidity gauge. So right now it's down below 40%. So we want to bump that up and I'll show you how we do that. Um, that piece of log right there is one of his little hiding spots. Um, so he can go underneath it. We usually soak that in water. Um, that way it retains moisture and it helps keep the humidity up. Um, and then in the deserts, because everybody's going, wait a minute, they live in the desert. They do. Um, but one of the things that they are good at in the desert is digging burrows. Um, and then the humidity level is much higher. So there's a lot of moisture down in the ground. Um, and that's where they're able to um, absorb some additional um, moisture. But what we do with him, two or three times a week, he gets a bath. Um, so this is our turtle tub. It's got warm water in it. And when I say warm, I kind of mean lukewarm water. So we put him in there. He swims around, does his business, um, and uh, drinks. It also makes his skin very permeable, so he's able to take in water that way as well. So while we work on his habitat, we're gonna leave him in here, let him soak up some additional moisture. He's doing these cute little squeaking. It's, it's adorable. Um, and then work on his cage. So right now, as you can see, we've got some bark mulch um, in here. Um, it is from the pet supply store, um, so it's perfectly safe for him. 
We had originally had him in a smaller container, smaller cage with some sand in it, but he had sand everywhere all the time. So I switched to the bark mulch. Um, as you can see now, these little disturbed areas are where he's trying to burrow. So he is making some little burrows, but I wanted to give him the opportunity to really be able to dig. So since we did our laying box and we have some sand and some topsoil, um, I'm gonna use that to build up part of his cage. So I'm going to flip you back around and we're gonna start working in the cage. You can see what I'm doing um, as we go along. Okay, so now I've turned just so you can see his cage and see what I'm doing in here. And one of the first things I wanna do is to kind of get it cleaned up a little bit. So I have an extra tub. So as I take some stuff out, I'll just put it in that tub. And then I'm gonna take out his, um, the decorative rocks and those kinds of things. Um, and they actually serve a purpose more than just decorating. So having these um, laying around his aquarium gives him things to climb on. Um, and he does love to do that. Um, you'll see him throughout the day climbing on different things and exploring. Um, and he explores the entire cage. <laughs> so um, he really does get around in here. Um, so we have rocks for him. These things here are um, pieces of bark. Um, all of these things we did get from um, a reptile supply place so that um, they're safe for him. Of course, this is his little hiding thing. So you can see when we put it down, it gives him a little bit of a tunnel. Um, and the moisture stays in here when we soak it. Um, so that gives him some extra humidity. Um, he's a messy eater. <laughs> so um, we have to make sure that we take his thing out. We get it all cleaned out and then we'll put it back in. Um, and today while we're doing this, I'll show you what I feed him um, and kind of my ideas as to why I feed him what I do. So he's got some little um, dried up pieces of lettuce. One of his main staples um, is definitely green leafy vegetables. Um, and as he gets bigger, we'll add some hay. Um, right now, because he's little, his jaw doesn't necessarily have the strength it needs to be able to chew up the hay. Um, so we haven't added that yet. Although I do have a product that I give him um, and we'll look at that when I do the food section and it is more of a hay. Um, he doesn't eat very much of it now, if any, but um, I am a big proponent of a lot of different variations in the diet. So I always make sure I offer it even though he doesn't eat it. Um, he might at some point, so it's always good to have it in there. Um, and then here's this, this is our I don't know, I call it his lake. So this is a shallow water dish um, and we keep um, water in here for him so that he can soak in it. He can drink if he needs to. Um, he does usually go from his food dish into his water dish. So um, you'll see him go back and forth throughout the day, which is really funny. Um, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take and I'm gonna, oops, sorry, got my hand in the view. I'm gonna add, um, I'm gonna move some of this over. So I still want him to have this bark area and that's where I'm actually gonna make sure that we leave the, um, the little hidey spot. Um, but this will allow him to be able to dig down in here if he wants to. But this also helps retain a lot of moisture. So I don't wanna take this out of there. I think that I really like having it in there for the moisture. Um, but then we're gonna take our dirt and our sand and we're gonna create a layer um, on this other side that gives him oops lost you sorry about that anyway so you make sure that you're you're set back up here so you can see exactly what's going on um I'm gonna add topsoil and sand I'm gonna mix it together on the other side of his cage um, and we might actually move over and that way you'll be able to really see what's going on in here. Okay, so now I've got you on this side and I'm gonna start scooping our topsoil into there. And so if you watched my video where we created um, a laying box for my chameleon, um, this is the same topsoil. This does have um, a few sticks and stuff in it from mulch, um, which is absolutely okay for him. So I'm not gonna have to sit and get that all picked out of there. Um, it won't bother him at all to have that in there. 
um, but I want to have a good layer, um, very similar to what I have over here. So I have two or three inches on this side. Um, so that's what I'm going to create over here is a couple of inches. So it's probably going to be more sand um, or more, I'm sorry, topsoil than sand. Um, but we'll see as we get going kind of what the mixture is going to look like. And what this is going to do is going to provide him with an area that he can sit and make some burrows because that's what they do. Um, it's how they help regulate their body temperature, how they help regulate um, the moisture content, um, and how they um, stay um, hydrated. So now that he's been here a couple of weeks and, and we're pretty confident with him, um, I wanted to make sure that I gave him some opportunities to start um, that burrowing, which is just a natural thing for him. So, and he did, he started doing that in the mulch. Didn't, oh, I'm gonna take that stick out. <laughs> that one's probably a little bit too big. Um, sorry, having a heck of a time getting my dirt out this morning. Doesn't wanna cooperate with me. Okay, so got quite a bit of uh, topsoil in there. And then again, this is organic. Um, it's all natural. It only had three ingredients in it, so um, we didn't have anything extra um, that might harm it. Um, and then we used clay sand because um, clay sand has been cleaned really well. So then I'm going to make um, several scoops of sand and make this wonderful mixture. And we're going to add probably a little bit of moisture to it at some point. Um, I don't want it to be as wet. Um, as my laying box, we don't need to have it to be really soaking wet or anything like that. So mix it around really good. And what we're doing is we're just creating um, a space in his aquarium that he can get in here and dig around and make himself some little burrows. So I think he's probably going to be pretty happy. Um, he's a pretty curious little guy, so he loves to explore his habitat. Um, my granddaughters, Kaylin and Jaylee are here right now. They actually take him out back, um, to run around on the concrete, um, which helps to keep his nails trimmed. Um, so I can tell you when he gets out there, man, he goes, um, they spend the whole time running around after him because he's just like a little man on a mission when he gets out there. Um, so I sprayed a little bit of moisture on the top. I'm just going to Kind of swirl it around and then probably add just a little bit more. Like I said, it doesn't have to be wet, wet. Um, but I do want to make sure that it's good and damp. Oh no. So my uh, main squeeze, Augie, is over here helping me. So I'm going to turn around here. So here's Augie. Um, as you know, he is like the executive producer or something of my videos. He scared him. <laughs> so he jumped back in his shell and squeaked. Um, but here he is. He's just soaking up. Um, some bath water. Um, he usually goes around and explores it. Um, at the moment though, um, Augie's kind of keeping that at bay because Augie is um, intently over here keeping watch. Yeah, um, making sure Nugget doesn't get away from us. Um, but this is the stuff that I pulled out of the enclosures. I was cleaning it. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of um, leafy vegetables and it's dried out. This is leftover from um, the last um, couple of days of feeding. I don't pull it out every single day, but um, when I clean the cage, I make sure to get it all out really well. Um, but we always wanna make sure that we have enough in here that he doesn't run out. So there's always a little bit extra um, and he's um, a messy eater, I guess you could say. He drags it all over his enclosure. Um, so had to clean out quite a bit of stuff. We got some, um, I would call it nice turtle poop. Um, so we've got um, definitely um, some feces. Um, so that we know that he is able to use the bathroom really well. Um, and here he is, his little head poking up. He's really curious now what's going on. Um, he sees Augie, so he's kind of checking Augie out since Augie's head is in this bin and not his. Um, he thinks it's safe for that, so. Um, behind him is some of the um, green leafy vegetables that I use. So when I get this set back up and his things back in there, um, I'll sit with you and show you what it is and how we put it together. Um, and we'll also talk about the water because I have um, a clarifying 
um, um, product that we put in the water to make sure that it's safe for the reptiles. It neutralizes anything that might be in there. So chlorine, stuff like that. So um, here's what we have now. We've got a good mixture of topsoil and some sand. Um, I made it just a little bit damp. Um, and then we have his bark. Um, so bark looks really good. He's got several inches in here now. So I'm really pleased with how much that we have. So I'm gonna go ahead and put his stuff back together at this point. So we wanna make sure his log gets back in. Um, we need to soak this again in water. It's feeling a little bit dried out. So I'll make sure that I soak that again this afternoon. We want to put his rocks back in here. He loves to climb all over his rocks. So we'll drop a couple of rocks in here in a couple of different locations. We'll put his little pieces of bark mulch or his bark back in there as he climbs on that. I'll put that rock in. Um, and then we have his food dish. Um, so his food dish, I'm gonna leave out. Um, we'll go ahead and get his mixture put back together. <clears throat> and then we need to put his water back in. I'm actually going to, whoops, spill it all over me, um, so that was good. Um, I'm going to dump it out because I always want to make sure that we have fresh water. So I put this on the cooler side um, of his cage. We don't want it to evaporate. We don't want it to be hot water, um, so we don't put it right underneath the light. And then I always put the light right in the middle. And the reason that I do that is that allows him to soak if he wants to under the heat lamp. Um, but then he can go to the edges. And so the edges are cooler than the middle. Um, and that's why you'll see my temperature gauge is off to the side. If I were to put it right under the heat lamp, it's gonna show me exactly how hot it is in there right under the lamp. If I put it too far to the edge, it shows me the coldest spot. So I always kind of keep it in the middle. Um, and that way, if I know I'm middle of the road, we're good, I don't have it too hot or too cold. So let's get making his breakfast this morning. Okay, so now we're gonna make Nuggets breakfast. So the dish that we use is a shallow dish. Um, he does crawl in it, sits on top of it. Um, so it has to be something that he can easily get into and get out of, and since he's so small, um, we've got this little bitty dish for that. Um, so I'll set that down there. I um, guess you don't need to see the dish and see what we're doing as we go along. So I'll leave you back up here. So um, I go to the store and I pick up um, Lots of fresh fruits and vegetables, um, so green leafy vegetables. Um, we do feed um, fresh fruits and vegetables to the majority of um, the critters that we have. So the monkey, um, we have crickets that we keep for the chameleons, so they also eat this stuff. Um, and we're gonna do chameleon feeding and everything else. And so um, I'll talk about why it is that we feed them fresh fruits and vegetables as well. Um, we do something that's called gut loading. So whatever goes into the crickets also go into our chameleons. So we wanna make sure that we're providing the best nutritional value as we can. So I grab this um, and I always get the organic. Um, I don't want any chemicals and stuff on my um, foods that I'm feeding for the chameleons. Um, and we eat this ourselves. So if we have hamburgers or something we want lettuce, we can absolutely pull this out. Um, what I do is I take a container it is. Um, so I try to mix quite a bit um, at one time and we keep it in this and put it back in the refrigerator um, so that I don't spend every morning making salad for the turtle or the um, monkey. Um, but we, throughout the day it's helpful to have it already made because some days maybe he eats more or we didn't give him as much as normal. So then I can just grab the container, add some more to it to make sure he has everything that he needs. So what we do is I always just grab a handful of it and then we break it into small pieces. He can break it off, um, but the larger chunks, it takes him quite a bit longer. And you'll see him running around the cage with this huge piece of lettuce if we've accidentally got some in there. Um, so try to help him out a little bit. I break it into small pieces um, so that he doesn't have to fight with it quite so much. Um, although it is quite amusing when he gets a, a bigger chunk of it and trying to see him chew it down. So I took a handful of that. And what I have is I have um, I have some, I'm not sure which greens, but, oh, this might be kale. So, um, this is 
yep, this is my kale. So I have some kale in here. I have some red leaf lettuce and then I have romaine lettuce. So that's the mixture that I got this last time. Um, and I do change it up from time to time. So they have a good variety. Um, never wanna feed them iceberg lettuce. Um, so everybody that's eating salads, you wanna make sure that you have some green um, leafy, dark green leafy um, lettuce in there. There is no nutritional value at all whatsoever in iceberg lettuce. Um, so it's basically just water, um, which is good, helps keep you hydrated, but it has no nutritional value. So um, if you're eating salads, make sure that you add some of these green leafy vegetables. And of course for critters, you never wanna use the iceberg because there's um, literally no value to it at all whatsoever. Um, so you'll be starving them nutritionally. So um, I think this is my last thing. So I'm gonna break this all up. We'll mix it up really good in the container so that he's getting a good wide variety. And then I'll show you some of the um, commercial food that I put in here as well. And I just do that for variety. Um, so now I've got this really good mixture of lettuce going on in here. Um, and I'll probably after the video make up um, more so the container's full um, that way this will maybe last him two days. Um, so I wanna make sure that I have plenty to get me through a couple of days. So then what we're gonna do is I take my dish and I have a couple of products. So this is one of the products that I found. Um, when I first got him, I looked to see what was in his container um, and what they were currently feeding him. So um, there were two products on the shelf. Um, first, there was this product. Get my glasses down. Um, so this is grassland tortoise food and it has vitamins and minerals added to it. So this works for Russian, Silcata, Leopard, Pancake Greek, Hermans, Desert, Tortoises, etc. So um, there's no artificial preservatives, colors, or anything like that. So this is a mixture of grasses um, and it does have vitamins added to it. Um, and that's why I always put a piece of it in there. And so all you really have to do, it's just one piece. So right now it's really hard and compact. So we'll add a little bit of water to it. So it will expand um, and then he's able to eat that. So that's the first thing that I picked up. The next thing that I got <clears throat> was tortoise food. Um, so this is what was in his cage um, over at the pet store. Um, so I wanted to make sure I was offering him what they were offering him because I didn't want him to get to my house and go, mm, what is she feeding me? I don't even know what this stuff is. So, um, and not that um, stores feed awful stuff, um, but there wasn't any green leafy vegetables in there. Um, so um, him in particular, I know had just come. He arrived literally the day before. So I know from the breeder that he was eating a good variety of food. Um, but just to make sure that I'm giving him what he's familiar with, I've given him, I still have one more to go. So I'll show you about that. So <laughs> this is um, a fortified daily diet as well. Um, so he doesn't need, he really doesn't need a whole lot of this stuff. Um, so I just put in eight to 10 little parts of it. And again, it's hard. <clears throat> so with him being little, probably isn't, you know, really able to munch on those things. Um, at some point he'll be able to just eat them. But all I do is I stick them in here and then I spray them. And that way we have a little bit of moisture on them. So I'll show you. So it's not enough. You can hardly even tell that I have any in there, but this will start to expand. Um, and I'll probably spay it another couple of times as we go along. So then I put my lettuce in there. So he, no kidding, eats a ton of food. So I'm gonna set you over here. So here's his dish and you can see that I've packed it right full. This may not last him for the day, um, but it gets him going. So that's why I start with quite a bit. And then I have these bites for tortoise. Again, it's a nutritional, soft, moist food. He does eat these. So I always sprinkle a few of these on the top of it. Um, and so it's really soft, it's spongy. Um, and he does enjoy having a couple of these throughout the day. Um, and so there's extra vitamins and minerals in there, so it's fine. Okay, so now I've made this wonderful little mixture um, for our little man. Um, and so we'll turn back around, we'll see him, we'll get his food in there. Um, give me just a sec. Okay. 
So here's his food dish. He's got a good variety of things. He's got this little thing is starting, oops, sorry. This little thing is starting to expand right now. I am gonna put a little bit more water on him because that's like hay and grasses. So I need that to expand and puff out. So essentially it kind of explodes. Um, so I'm gonna put this back in here. I always put it on the back edge um, of his aquarium. He knows right where it is. So here's my little man soaking in the water. Um, ooh, looks like he's taking full advantage of being in the water and um, got some floaties. So anyway, um, we can go ahead and get him out of here now. We'll put him back in his closure. Um, we will give him some water in his little lake so that he can um, soak in there if he wants to. So let's go, big guy. So he's probably gonna be pretty curious when we first put him in um, because now his habitat has changed um, and he is a curious little guy. So we'll see him kind of start moving around and figuring out what's in there. You can see his little tail going. <laughs> He's such a cutie. So he's gonna, looks like he's gonna go over to the food dish, which is right on car, uh, right on par for him. Um, usually when I get him up in the morning, get the lights on and get moving around and give him some water and spray it down, he heads straight to the food dish. So they have very big appetites. So it seems like there's more food than him. Um, and essentially there is. Um, but he will truly eat um, almost every bit of that that we've got in there. So, oh, put my finger in front, sorry. I'm trying to get you down here so you can watch him snack a little bit. Um, and he does get up, literally up into the food dish. Um, so at any point in time, you turn around and notice that that's what he's doing, he's sitting in there. So he's checking it out, looking to see what he's got going on for the day. So um, I haven't added the water to his um, pond yet, so we need to get that done this morning. So let's get that taken care of. Okay, so you can see his little pond in here. I can tell that it's crooked. Um, and I don't want it crooked because then all my water will be on one end and not the other. So we'll move a little bit of dirt around, try to get it leveled back out. So there we go. So. Um, I have the water right now in here, um, and I've marked on it animal water because we use this um, ourselves um, for things. But I also mark on here how much of the neutralizer it takes for this gallon of water. And so I have this, it's for reptiles. It's RepTi-safe, and so it's a water conditioner um, for snakes, lizard, tortoises, turtles, um, hermit crabs, um, everything and we use this because it neutralizes um, chlorine it removes any ammonia it adds electrolytes and calcium um, so we want to make sure that the water is safe to drink and it also fortifies it and so for this gallon it takes 32 drops so um, you do have to stand there and measure um, or count the number of drops that you're putting in but that's why i mix it by the whole gallon because we have to use it for all of the animals so now that I have the turtle cage back together, we will put some water back in here. And it's okay if it splashes out, doesn't matter. We usually use the extra humidity anyway. So you don't wanna to have too much water um, that they um, drowned. So tortoises um, are not like turtles. Turtles live in water, tortoises live on land. Um, so, um, they have to be able to touch and their heads still be above water. So when you're watering them, you never want to have a dish that is bigger than he is, um, because you don't want him to drown. So now it looks like I've got everything back together. So I'm really happy with the different, um, areas of substrate that we have in here now. Okay. I'm going to turn it around. So we've got our sand and topsoil. He's got rocks to climb on. He's got his little pond um, that he can get in and soak. He's still back there at his food dish, um, snacking away, having breakfast this morning. And then we still have our area with our bark mulch 
um, and also our hide lob. Um, the other thing that I got, oops, upside down is a terrarium starter kit. So there's some different things um, in here. And so I picked this up so we could add um, some different texture to his um, aquarium. So I'm gonna try to open this this morning. I'll let you guys watch him over there snacking while I get it opened. Okay, so now that I have it open, <clears throat> It has a couple of different kinds of moss. So you can see we've got some different moss in here. And so this just changes up the texture um, of the substrate. So what I'm gonna do is, I think it'd be really nice to have some around the lake. And so you can break it apart, make it whatever size you want to. So I'm just gonna break that apart. <clears throat> I'm gonna take the rock that I put over here and I'm gonna put it on the edge to kind of hold it down a little bit. This gives him just a little bit of a different area, um, a little bit of different texture. I'm gonna spray it down. I want it to be nice and moist. So I'm gonna spray it, then he's got a little extra moisture there. Now I've got stuff floating in his pond, so I'm gonna scoop out some of the junk I put in there. Um, and I usually try to change that on a daily basis, so it'll be okay. Um, and then, as you can tell, he's still back there just a chomping away. So anyway, um, if you've got questions about a uh, tortoise, um, feel free, shoot me some questions in the comments, be happy to answer them back. Um, and thanks again for joining us today, um, watching us uh, do a little work on Nugget's cage. Thanks everyone, have a fabulous day.